Hi, in this short video I'm going to help you multiply your income quickly with outsourcing. And that's with a series of tips that I've put together uh, generated by years and years of experience of outsourcing. We outsource a lot with our business. And most internet marketers and even just offline business owners outsource quite a bit. And outsourcing has grown and really built all kinds of businesses out there. When you outsource, you're taking just one person or a few, depending on the size of your, your business now, and you're multiplying that workforce. And the beauty of modern technology allows us to do that while we're sitting at home, not having to go interview people, you know, put them on salary. You can just sit at home, talk to people online, get good contractors, and just get them going in the workforce. No on-the-job training, etc. So modern technology and the Internet really helps a person, especially an Internet marketer, marketer multiply their workforce and multiply their income uh, very quickly and very easily so those who don't outsource they should be outsourcing outsourcing is just a, an incredible opportunity to grow your income now I see a lot of people are held back they don't outsource because they look at the monetary investment in the outsourcing instead of the multiplying of their income that will result from the outsourcing if they do it correctly and that's what I'm going to get into in this video how to do it correctly so I want to get into several uh, important tips. Obviously, it would take a large course to get into every single detail, but there are several important tips uh, that will really give you a high-level overview and help you just to guide you in the right way so you can uh, outsource correctly and get some good contractors doing some good work and helping you to multiply your income. So the first thing is less experience and lower fees can cost you. And I've learned this firsthand, especially when I first started outsourcing years and years ago. I would only look for the cheapest workers. If they had a low hourly fee, um, or you know, depending on how I was outsourcing, where I was outsourcing, and how it was structured, just cheap. I didn't want to spend much money, uh, but I wanted to make a lot of money. I quickly realized that when I went that route, I ended up paying more in the long run because I had to pay these people to go back and fix their mistakes. And that happens so very often with outsourcing. So many people do that, especially when they're new to outsourcing. They go out uh, spend way more money than they need to spend on a project because they chose someone who was cheap and wasn't very experienced, wasn't very knowledgeable. Uh, they had to go back, fix their mistakes, or you had to go pay someone else to fix that other person's mistakes. But what I learned very quickly was if you're willing to find someone who's really proficient, who's really good, knowledgeable, experienced, and what, whatever your project is, you'll end up spending much less. So there are a few things you can look at to get someone who isn't real expensive but isn't super cheap at the same time and can actually get the job done uh, without having to go back and fix the mistakes or pay someone else to do so. So that's the first one, the very first thing I ever learned with outsourcing years ago. I um, mean I learned the hard way spending thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars that I didn't need to uh, for that very reason right there. So that's the first thing. Uh, less is not always more. Less will in many cases cost you more money. Uh, the second, consider their reviews. So this is whenever you're looking through, you know, looking for contractors uh, when you're interviewing. Consider their reviews if that's provided, depending on where you're going to get the, this work done. Uh, any reviews that you can see from other clients, uh, take a look at those, see how many there are, see how the ratings are, see what they say about the person. The number of hours they've worked is important. I don't want someone who's only out, worked an hour um, on the system or wherever uh, it is. And the hourly fee, those three things, over any skills that they say they have. So when I'm looking at what a contractor says that they can do, that's more for just relevance for the project. I'm not really worried about all the details that they claim they can do because a lot of contractors will inflate their skills and their knowledge. So I don't put a whole lot into what they say they can and cannot do. Uh, other than just to categorize them. So if I want a WordPress plugin coded, then I want to make sure that this person has WordPress plugin coding experience, for example. Now, if they start to get into all the technologies of it and, you know, all these plugins they've done, etc., I don't really think too much about that. I just want to make sure they know how to do that. Okay, and then I want to get into the reviews. I want to see what kind of projects that they've been working on. Because if they've been working on writing articles and they're applying for a WordPress plugin build, for example, then I know that there's something 
weird there because if they're an expert at building WordPress plugins, they're probably going to be building WordPress plugins instead of writing articles or, you know, something like that. So that's the type of thing I look for in the reviews. And then obviously you want to make sure they have high, uh, good reviews, people who really like them. Um, very few, if any, negative reviews. And if they are negative, I want to read them, see what the deal is. Number of hours worked is really important to me. I want to make sure that they're experienced. Now, there are some services out there where you don't even have to look at this because they have pre-screened employees and that's what we'll be doing with this service we'll be launching very soon uh, but if you're going with these other services you really have to be careful and make sure uh, that who is applying they have some experience because there are a lot of people who go out they get bad reviews so they'll cancel their account and get a new account and then it just looks like they're new but they have this experience and they just started at the site you know whatever so it's always good and safer to make sure they have a lot of hours worked if they've worked a lot of hours uh, at the marketplace wherever it is that you're at uh, looking for the workers uh, then it's a safer bet. And then the hourly fee. Uh, obviously, you don't just look at the hourly fee. I would definitely put it into the equation along with the other things we've talked about. But the hourly fee, uh, in many cases, I find that the higher hourly fee, uh, the higher the quality. So if they're, they have a lot of feedback, uh, they're, they have a lot of hours, but their hourly fee is just at the bottom of the barrel. They're just super cheap. There's probably a reason why they're super cheap. So that's just one of a minor thing that I kind of uh, keep an eye on. It's not something that I would base my decision off of, but if they're again, you know, if they have just loads of hours and loads of good reviews, but their hourly fee is super low, you you're going to have to wonder why their fee is so low. And there's probably a reason why. Third, provide specific details about what needs to be done. And this is a very very important one. If you just give a contractor a general idea of what you want without getting specific you should not be surprised if you get something that you were not thinking because different people think differently than you. <laughs> I think differently than you. Um, everyone thinks differently. So you might have this more specific idea in your head. You just give them a general idea and they come up with something totally different than what you were thinking. And that's another thing I learned from the hard way from experience over the years. Uh, you really need to be as specific as possible when you're working with contractors. No matter what it is, whether it's coding or writing content or whatever it is, you want to be specific. Make sure they know exactly what you want. Next, start with small projects. If you have a new contractor on board, someone that you're just starting to out outsource with, you want to build a relationship with them and you want to test them. You don't just want to give them a big project. I've done that the hard way too. <laughs> I've done most of this the hard way and learned. Um, I've had coders who I paid tens of thousands of dollars to do a project and I, I didn't get them started on a small project first to test them to make sure they were really good. I just trusted them and they ended up costing me a whole lot of money and I ended up paying them a whole lot more to fix things that they broke and that they did wrong. I could have given them a small project and found out, hey, this probably isn't the right coder for this. So uh, start with small projects, just give them a test because even the other things that we've already gone through, they're not always foolproof and sometimes you'll still get a coder or a writer or a whatever it is that they're doing uh, who passed all that that we went through, everything looked good and then they still just didn't end up being exactly what you needed. So start with small projects, see how they do with them and then go on to larger projects. Keep them accountable but don't micromanage. Now there are several different ways to keep them accountable. Uh, you might go through a service where they're accountable to that service or you might be working with them one-on-one. -on -one. I won't get into all the different possibilities but just keep them accountable. Don't do, let them just do whatever they want. But at the same time don't micromanage. If you're micromanaging and you're on them for every single little detail you want you know, to know exactly what they've been doing every 10 minutes of, you know, of the day that you've been paying them you're going to drive them away. They're not going to want to work for you. Uh, they're going to be annoyed. And again, I've learned the hard way. When I first started off, I was doing that. I was micromanaging. I wanted them to be accountable for every second that they were on the clock. And it just caused problems. It caused negativity. Uh, it just caused problems and it didn't work out. Don't micromanage. Just make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. If you think that they may not be working as much as they should be, but they're doing exactly what you want them to do at the price that you had in mind, then don't worry too much about it. 
Uh, that's going to give them the freedom. That's going to make them feel a lot better um, about the relationship. That's going to be cause them to be more motivated to work for you, more excited to work for you, and that can only result in good things. So don't overly micromanage. Uh, use a trusted service provider, and again, we'll be launching a new service here pretty soon. I need tasks, and it's a trusted service provider. We're going to go with contractors who we've worked with, who we've interviewed personally, who we've put through all these steps and processes so you can make sure that it's a trusted contractor. But no matter who you go through, just make sure it's a trusted provider. Uh, there are many different providers out there and some of them should not be trusted. So just make sure that it's a trusted service provider. Once you find good workers, keep them. This is probably the best tip in this entire video. And that's something I learned again uh, over the years. I found finally had found you know several contractors doing uh, good writers, good coders, good workers who did several different things. And then I would have another task, another uh, product, another you know whatever, which w I wouldn't need that contractor anymore. And then I would not be able to get a hold of them again to use them again in the future. So make sure you keep the contact details of your good contractors and let them know that you will probably have more work for them in the future you just don't know you know what's going on so if you find someone who just does an awesome job with something and then you don't need whatever that is done for a while keep their contact details so you can come back to them at a later date and get a hold of them whenever you need more work in that area done uh, so keep them once you find good ones very very important and then lastly outsource as much as possible if you can outsource it outsource it if you have the money to outsource it do it if you can trust a contractor to do it do it because the more other people are doing that frees up more time for you to do what's important and to scale up your business to find different avenues to find different opportunities etc so outsource as much as you possibly can and that is a big tip and I think so many internet marketers especially newer internet marketers uh, really don't see the importance the extreme value in outsourcing uh, like I said previously in the video outsourcing allows you to multiply yourself and not only multiply multiply yourself but to improve on what you can do because you can find outsourcers who can do all different kinds of things everything that can be done you can find an outsourcer who can do it so if it can be outsourced and you have the money to do it then outsource it it's going to help you to really multiply your income in a major way so that's it these are just the top tips um, that it I thought of over the years of outsourcing and again we've done so much outsourcing uh, we outsource something every single day there's something being outsourced in our business so uh, we've learned almost all of this the hard way so hopefully this will help you uh, to not have to learn the hard way to not have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars uh, when you don't have to so you can save money so you can outsource correctly start increasing your income multiplying your own income through outsourcing without all of the problems that we had uh, starting off due to our own inexperience.